Okay, I guess we should get started. Uh, can somebody close the door? I'm not sure if I can compete with the outside world. <laughs> so uh, my name is Jimmy Shanahan and I uh, live in San Francisco, the Bay Area. And today I'd like to talk to you about the parallels between gambling in Las Vegas and advertising online. There are strong parallels and uh, there are lessons to be learned from both worlds. So um, before I begin, I want to give you some background on myself. So I've been working in this field of AI, data science for the last 25 years. And I've come through all the cycles of uh, expert systems to small machine learning problems to large scale big data science type problems. And it's been a, a, an amazing uh, and fun ride for me at least. And I've worked in a variety of places. and. Um, my PhD is in machine learning and um, uh, probabilistic reasoning. And I got to use that in a variety of contexts throughout the world, including at Xerox Research. Uh, more recently at TURN, it's a, a leading uh, online advertising network uh, and, and display uh, demand side platform in, in, um, in California. And uh, for the last five years, I've been consulting with a variety of companies in the Bay Area and also here in Minneapolis. Um, you may have heard of W3i and NativeX. And uh, I also teach at the University of California, Santa Cruz. So at the core of all my work is uh, data science. And I'm always intrigued by uh, peculiar problems. And one of the problems that we face as data scientists is the cold start problem. How do we deal with a situation that we haven't seen before? And how do we get to learn as quickly as possible? And so today, I'd like to, to share some perspectives on this uh, um, with you. So I'm always curious to hear who's in the audience here. And uh, I'd like to maybe learn about one or two of you, at least. Um, so who here is from academia? OK, great. What do you do in academia? I, I actually uh, uh, teach uh, strategic communication and marketing okay. at, at Concordia University. And then I'm also the director of marketing there. OK, great. So who here is from industry? The rest of you, I guess. OK, who's here from the advertising industry? Engineers, how about you? What do you do? Um, I'm starting up a company to make a device that measures oxygen levels and muscles for athletes. OK, great. We're, mar we're marketing it online. You're marketing online, OK, OK. Um, so who's a data scientist in the audience? <laughs> Come on now, don't be shy. Sort of. OK, so what do you do? I'm a business analyst for Site Search here at Best Buy. OK, how's it going? I've got a lot of data. Yalla. <laughs> no problems? I, well, not yet. OK. There. All right. OK, great. Try, try to make sense of the data. So I'd like to know what you want to get from today's talk. Just different ways to really look at it and analyze the, the data. I mean, there's, there's so much there. And there's, there's, I think, a lot of rich content in that data. Mm -hmm. And I have some ideas of what I might be able to get out of the patterns in that data. But I'm always looking for new ways to find out new things about that data. OK, great, great. So the academic back there, what do you hope to get to from today's presentation? Oh. <laughs> Just, uh, I don't even know. I'm here because this one sounded interesting. So. OK, that's, that's fair enough. That's, yeah. that's, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. So um, anyway, I work for a variety of companies. And I'm not going to tell you anything about their trade secrets or secret sauces. I'm going to talk about things that are generally available and accessible in the public uh, um, literature. So I thought I'd structure today's talk by briefly talking about advertising, because some of you maybe work in the area, some of you don't, and what it means to me and, and uh, the industry. And then I want to talk about uh, multi-arm bandit uh, uh, problems and how we are surrounded by these types of problems. And there's a lot of machinery out there that we can leverage and uh, how difficult these problems can be. Uh, then I want to tell you about some online machine learning algorithms that can be used to tackle these types of problems. In particular, there are context-free type algorithms where we don't know anything about the env surrounding environment. Um, and then there are context-based, uh, contextual-based uh, algorithms where we actually know a lot about the consumer or the advertiser or publisher and so on. And, um, and, and then, if time permits, I want to talk about evaluation in these types of contexts because we're dealing with a world that's very dynamic and we're we're, in, we're actually um, 
uh, interacting with the world. We're making decisions and therefore we are manipulating uh, consumers and their behaviors in, in certain ways and how do we measure how well we're doing when we're actually, actually interfering with their behavior. And uh, that's a real big problem uh, when it comes to uh, online learning where we're dynamically modifying ourselves and our understanding of the world and how do we do this in an offline setting in particular. And then I want to tell you about a, a competition that's just started two days ago or three days ago. Um, it's a competition in uh, advertising and I, I'm a, one of the judges of this competition and uh, you get to win $160,000 uh, potentially at the end of this quarter or, or next quarter or, or the end of the year. So um, if you humor me for this presentation I'll tell you more about that at the end of the presentation. And so um, one, of the one of the criticisms about the advertising industry uh, in, and digital advertising industry in general is that as an academic, you don't get to see the insides of, say, Google or Microsoft and how they uh, make money or rank results and so on. And there's no data available. And there's a kind of a, a, a perceived gap between what goes on in industry and academia. And the, the two fields seem to be diverging on what is important to study and do research on. And so um, this is an opportunity for academics and practitioners in the field to come together and work on a problem that is very real. It's an online advertising uh, problem and it's with real data. And this competition is particularly interesting because um, not only do you get to submit your, your results and get a score on a scoreboard, the winners will actually get an opportunity to deploy their code in, in a real life production system and get to see how well their code does in that context. So it's an interesting twist to this type of uh, data science competition. So enough about that. I'm sure you're all familiar with advertising. This is a great ad here. This is 3M and basically the challenge here is break this glass and they'll give you a million dollars. And uh, it's a, ma a marvelous ad and um, this was ran a couple years ago and they had a security guard just on standby so that nobody would drive a bus into it uh, and tamper that way. So you were allowed to kick the glass and punch it and uh, it, it basically was a very, very clever ad for 3M. So the idea behind advertising is that we want to cast a we want to tell people about a product or a service we're trying to sell and we want to create awareness. So we get into broadcast mode and say, hey, this is a great product, why don't you buy it or here's a discounted product, uh, purchase it. So we want to create uh, awareness by doing a broadcast uh, and then once we've um, got people interested and they're considering our, our product, um, maybe through a search uh, on, on, a, on a search engine, um, we want to provide um, more uh, information and maybe more incentive to purchase the product. And ultimately, uh, as a marketer, you're interested in converting these interested people into purchasing the product. And this is our traditional purchase funnel. And so we pay a lot of money up here to get into broadcast mode to tell people about our service. And then as we go down the funnel, maybe a little bit less because our audience is getting smaller and smaller. So. Um, Anyway, just a, a number of uh, background facts on advertising. So back in 1995 in the heyday of, or not the heyday, but the, the beginning of online advertising, um, um, the ad revenue per user was about $9. Uh, whereas today, um, the average revenue from um, advertising um, is about $49. And globally, um, digital advertising is about $80 billion, um, which is uh, about 10 to 12% of all of advertising across all media channels. So um, overall, you might, might wonder how much is the click worth on uh, Google? So it's about 55 cents. So advertising is one of these uh, um, very divisive uh, uh, tools for, for communication in the sense that um, people either love it or hate it. And uh, you probably know, you're very much aware of this, uh, this uh, a quote from John Wanamaker, the father of modern day uh, advertising. Half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. And, and, and so I would say that maybe 99% of your money is wasted and only 1% really matters online. And uh, we still have problems kind of uh, uh, coming up with the credit assignment um, uh, uh, solution. And so, but the bottom line is that advertising makes up 2% of uh, GDP in the US and has done so for the last 100 years. So it's not a problem that is going to go away or, or, or die. Uh, it's very much a vibrant uh, industry and a very effective tool for uh, companies to, to connect with consumers. So um, 
you know, you might wonder how effective online advertising is versus offline advertising. So basically, the, the, the cost to advertise on TV versus the cost to advertise on, um, online, on a social network or on a web search engine, um, th those costs are kind of comparable. But um, the ROI tends to be a lot higher in an online setting. It tends to be 2x that of offline um, 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 budget spends. So, um, as an advertiser or a marketer, my biggest challenge is, first of all, I need to, to figure out what I want to market um, and then create a message. And then I want to figure out, well, where do I put my ad? So I, I need a media strategy. And um, today in the online setting, I've got lots of places where I can put my ad. I can put it in social media, search, uh, games, uh, mobile, uh, you name it. There's a whole variety of online settings where I can show my ad. So that's, that's a very macro level uh, breakdown. But then you want to get down to saying, well, if you want to show it on a, a gaming um, situation, which game do you want to show it on? What time of day? What kind of consumer? You've got all these little segments that you want to uh, model um, uh, so that you can target the right people. So when it comes to advertising, you also need to figure out, oh, do I want a branding um, um, type of campaign where I want to create a long-term effect? Uh, or do I want a more immediate call to action? I have uh, also decisions about what type of ads I want to show, and they can be graphic or text um, channels. So ultimately, um, as an advertiser or a chief marketing officer, I've just got a whole bunch of decisions to make um, with regard to advertising campaigns. But luckily enough, there's a nice ecosystem in place that connects me, the advertiser, to the consumers via these publishers here. And there's all these intermediaries that have come into play, including ad networks and agencies. Agencies have been around for a long time, but these are new players in the digital um, regard, demand side platforms, um, exchanges, and so on. Not to worry about this. It's a very crowded space. There's a lot going on. and. Uh, <laughs> You met, yeah, sorry. Um, so ultimately, um, it gets down to a situation like this. Um, it, here's a, a mobile game, and uh, here are a collection of ads or offers. And the idea here is that I, I need to figure out, well, which ad or offer should I show first? and uh, on second and third and fourth. And as an ad network, I need to figure out um, this order such that I want to optimize the experience for the, for the consumer, the user. I also want to optimize the um, return on investment for the advertiser. And in addition, I want to make sure the publisher, the game provider here, uh, is making money as well. So all in all, this all boils down to the following equation. I have um, the advertiser commits to paying for uh, maybe, sorry, paying for an action here. Might be an install of a game, um, or maybe a click or a view. And then um, there might be some conversion rate or a click-through rate um, that we want to um, model as well. So, so basically, when an advertiser agrees to pay for a bid, they are uh, committing to pay that bid once there's a, a conversion. Now, this is only an expected um, uh, this is only expected revenue because the, the click or the action is not guaranteed. So all we have is an estimate for the conversion rate. And therefore, we get this expectation about how much money it costs the advertiser. So we call this expected uh, cost per 1,000 impressions because uh, marketers love to deal in, in, in units of 1,000. So basically, we get to rank these ads or offers based upon eCPM, based upon the conversion rate times the bid price by 1,000. And this is the core of any our main many uh, online advertising engines. So, the bid price here is fixed by the advertiser, and generally they have good uh, good sense of what that should be. So it might might be, uh, for example, I'm selling a widget, and let's say the widget is worth uh, hundred dollars. I may say, okay, I'm happy to pay ten percent of that um, um, cost or a price uh, in marketing and advertising fees. So I agree to pay $10 uh, for a, a conversion. And so I, I will just put $10 in here. And then, of course, uh, I need to, the ad network needs to figure out this conversion rate here. 
because um, this rate here will vary depending on the type of consumer who sees the ad. So if I'm selling uh, a smartphone and uh, you're a high-tech uh, young person living in the Bay Area, then you uh, maybe are very prone to saying, oh, I love that ad, I love that uh, phone, I'm going to buy it. And so there's a high conversion rate. Whereas if I show that phone to, to uh, a grandmother living in, uh, um, I don't know where, um, someplace uh, remote where there's no cell phone coverage, um, then th there'll be very low conversion rates. So anyway, the bottom line is that a as an advertiser, a sorry, as an ad network, um, I need to figure out this conversion rate or click-through rate uh, depending on the type of action. And so it comes down to um, um, estimating this number uh, from historical data. And, um, Typically, this number here, um, we, can say, we can say something about the, the mean or expected value. We can also say something about the variance or the standard deviation around this number here. And, um, and if we take that, if we, we assume that the average click-through rate for an ad is 2.6%, um, we can get down to confidence intervals like this. So after showing the ad a thousand times, we're going to have a, a, a variance, a 95% 95, 95 confidence interval here from 1.6 to 3.6. So that's a very high variance estimate. And either we're going to charge too much or we're going to have lots of missed opportunities from an advertiser's perspective. But all in all, the, these, um, these um, estimates are too, too wide. To get it down to something manageable, we need to show it 10,000 uh, times. So the challenge here is that this is per segment. And we can segment our world in a variety of ways. And um, sometimes um, these segments can get into the order of billions of, of buckets. So you can imagine that um, a segment could be a web page in the world. How many web pages do we have today in the world? Maybe 100 billion? Let's say 100 billion. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a 10 to the power 11 pages where we can show an ad. Um, how many ads do we have today? We've in the order of, uh, let's say, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, actually a lot more than that. Um, how many users do we have today? We've got billions of users online. So potentially, if you just took the cross product of every page with every user, with every ad, that's a massive space. And so what you'd like is, you'd like to have data in each one of those cells. And you'd like to have 10,000 or 1,000 uh, impressions because these uh, confidence intervals here are uh, pretty wide even for, for 1,000 um, um, impressions. So um, anyway, that's one problem that we face in online advertising, getting accurate estimates of uh, click-through rates. In addition to that, um, our world is very non-stationary. We always have new ads coming in and old ads going out. We've got new pages coming in, new consumers coming in, or consumers who delete their cookies, and so we've got no context about the, cookie, the user. And um, so we've got this non-stationary type problem that we're dealing with. And um, so basically, um, this, pro this problem sounds like uh, a person who is about to go to Vegas with a bag of money and they want to make a, a huge return on that investment. And that's what it sounds like. And, and, and uh, basically, we can um, work with that analogy. And um, we can play with the analogy of the one-armed bandit. So who here has played slot machines? OK, so you're kind of familiar with the concept. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who's been to Vegas? All right. So uh, I guess you know the feeling then. You walk into this hotel or whatever, and man, there's a line of machines. And you're wondering, OK, which slot machine do you want to play? And how would you? So what, what would be good policy for, for actually selecting a slot machine to play with? Don't. <laughs> don't? OK. Let's say, don't. Let's say you've just got a bag of money, and you're jonesing to, to have fun. The, one that the pretty put, uh, one. <laughs> the pretty one, OK. Fair enough. That's good policy. One where you put money in and get changed back. Yeah, that's 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 always it's always a good sign. Um, so so then um, so so basically anyway the 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 so people have looked at this problem, and my God they've said okay this is a really hard problem, and uh, so the the problem is which machine to play. And uh, you know this type of problem shows up every day for us. Um, so for example, if you're a manager or you're uh, working in an organization, you're trying to figure out which project should I work in. 
there's a lot of uncertainty when you start a project. And um, so you want to balance that uncertainty with how much payoff you get for doing the project. And um, so it's, it's a whole project management uh, type scenario. Um, and uh, originally, this was considered by the Allied scientists in World War II. And they, they thought it was so hard that they said, OK, well, let's just drop this one on the Germans. Uh, it'll keep them busy for a while, because we can't solve it. And uh, so, so, um, um, so the, the basic idea here was, um, uh, so after the war, uh, a number of scientists started working on this and came up with some ways, some frameworks for analyzing some upper bounds on how to um, quantify uh, knowledge in this kind of uncertain environment. They came up with uh, uh, various types of policies that would lead to optimal type uh, of spend or in terms of slot machines. And, um, and, and various theorems. And basically, the, uh, the idea here is that um, we don't know anything at the start about these machines. Um, but we're going to play. And we're going to adopt our expectations for a slot machine based upon the, the rewards uh, that we get from the slot machine. So we play, we win, uh, we play, we lose, and we just we keep recording that data. And in an online fashion, we adopt our expectation for each slot machine. And, um, there, there are various um, algorithms that one can uh, bring to bear uh, that allow us to, to discover um, the true expected payoff for each of these machines. OK, so I guess um, the, the, what, what's the connection here with advertising? Um, well, basically, um, when I have an ad, let's say I have three ads, um, and I have one slot where I can show an ad. So basically, I can have an expectation about maybe the revenue that I might receive by putting this ad in this slot. Um, and this expectation could be <laughs> modeled as, uh, as mu1, mu2, mu3. So it could be uh, clicks, it could be uh, money, it could be anything you want. And the goal here is to uh, select uh, one of these ads sequentially for this context. And we want to do this in a, in a fashion such that we maximize the total expected reward. And this type of problem is definitely prevalent in uh, online advertising. It's also prevalent in uh, other types of uh, e-commerce contexts uh, and so on. So the idea here is that we can frame um, the action of selecting an ad and, uh, and associate that with some sort of a reward. And then uh, as we go through time and select ad after ad, we kind of create this uh, notion of regret. And regret is defined as, OK, if I was to show, if I knew everything about these ads, and if I was to select the best ad each time, that's my optimal policy. And, uh, and then I have another policy that I'm just working with. And the difference between this um, optimal payout and the payout I get for, for my policy is called regret. And, um, and so that allows us to make progress in terms of building algorithms. So we have this idea of regret. And um, we want to leverage that um, to provide some upper bounds on various types of algorithms that we want to develop. So, and, and so people have looked at this um, problem um, of ad serving from a, uh, from a bandit uh, type uh, of situation. And it, it comes under, the, under the, the, um, the title of online learning, because we are uh, making decisions. And based on our decisions, we're getting feedback immediately. And we're trying to incorporate that directly into the, to the next round of um, selection. And so it's an online, real-time learning algorithm. And there are two basic flavors that, that, have, been, uh, that have received a lot of attention. There's the context-free context banded algorithm, and there's the contextual uh, banded algorithm. <clears throat> what time do we um, finish here? Um, I forget the. 3.30? OK. All right. So, all right. so when, it, when it comes to online advertising, um, there's so much data out there. Now, there's, there's a lot of data, but there's still not enough data, I guess, to fill all those little buckets or cells that we are concerned with. And um, typically, what we do is we build models that are very static in nature. We build them in a, a offline batch manner. And we might train a model today, and it might run for the next month uh, for a particular advertising campaign or, or a particular ad network. And um, the problem with that is that um, the model is, is kind of stationary. It's stuck in time. 
and our data and our users and our ads and all that, they're, they're all moving uh, dynamically through the system. And so we've got a very non-stationary system uh, that we're trying to model with a very stationary type model. So what we like is, um, and this is the traditional approach for machine learning and data mining, and it works pretty well. But we'd like to have a more dynamic system where we can interact uh, with the environment. Um, so we want to take an action, like show an ad. And then what we'd like to get is uh, some sort of utility for showing that ad to, to the consumer and basically provide feedback into our system and um, basically reinforce what we're doing in a real-time manner. And ultimately, we'd like to model a consumer in a, a long-term fashion. We'd love to go beyond saying, OK, well, uh, today what we do is we, we show an ad to a consumer and we say, OK, what's the best ad I can show this consumer right now? Um, and that's a very short-term, myopic approach to ad serving. And we'd like to go beyond that and say, hey, if we were to model the consumer um, and say we have a relationship with this consumer that goes beyond this impression or this view, uh, we look at the, the long-term and lifetime value of a consumer, then that becomes a very useful way to, to model the consumer as well. Now, unfortunately, uh, we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about this one-step myopic uh, type of modeling of the user. But reinforcement learning and Markov decision processes provide the machinery to embrace this uh, multi-step uh, um, into the future uh, for, for modeling a consumer. Now, what we are talking about today is a, a one-step Markov decision process uh, using this notion of online learning. So this type of uh, problem um, comes into play uh, in a variety of contexts and it overcomes some problems that we might face in say collaborative filtering where we don't have a data about a new item or a new user uh, similar to ads and so on. And like I said, there are a variety of techniques we can use here. We're going to look at the K-armed uh, bandit approach. Uh, we're not going to look at reinforcement learning today. But if you are interested, I'll be very happy to talk about it to you offline. So we're going to look at um, um, three, two, two types of algorithms, and we're going to look at some evaluation. Um, so the idea here is, um, OK, this is uh, too much, I think. Um, so, so the idea is that um, as a publisher, I, I'm interacting with a consumer. And the idea that the consumer has a context, uh, has some description, or some variables that describe the consumer. I mean, he may have a cell phone. He may have some demographic data we might be able to glean from his zip code, maybe, or IP address. And um, basically, as a publisher, um, I get to select um, a, an ad, which is basically taking an action. Um, and this action is driven by a policy I've, I've come somehow learned. And I take an action, show the ad, and then I, the user clicks or converts, and I get a reward. And so I get into this kind of cycle of um, interacting with the consumer and uh, modulating my behavior as a publisher or ad server. So the general idea behind whole, this whole bandit approach is the following. This is probably the one slide that maybe you could maybe photograph and, and in your mind and take it home with you and think about it for a while. Um, so basically, we've got two ads here. And one ad here, uh, this ad two, um, here's the uh, mean um, um, click-through rate or conversion rate for, for this ad. And oh, by, by the way, there's no variance. So this, is, this, this number is very accurate. We know precisely that this is the number here. Now, we've got another ad here that we just started showing uh, to, to consumers. And um, we see that the, the mean behavior is over here somewhere, and, but it has a big variance. And um, so one could say, well, let's just, uh, when this context shows up, let's just select add two because it has the, the highest mean uh, behavior. But the fact is that this ad here has uh, a lot of uncertainty about its mean. And so therefore, um, in the spirit of the bandit approaches and leveraging the theory that has been developed, we should actually select um, add one here because um, um, the mean plus a standard deviation will actually uh, trump this uh, mean here. And so the idea here is that rather than serving ads based upon their mean, we're serving ads based upon their mean plus one standard deviation about the uncertainty about the mean. 
And when we do this, um, various uh, theories show that this is a, an optimal policy uh, that will get us to learning about our environment in a very efficient way. And um, so th there are a variety of approaches to um, to tackling this uh, bandit type problem. And they all come down to modeling the click-through rate or the conversion rate in the case of ads, where we say number of clicks over number of impressions. And um, then um, we have a variety of algorithms that have been developed. One of them is called the epsilon greedy algorithm. And the idea here is very simple. So with a probability of 1 minus uh, epsilon, we choose the, um, the ad with the highest um, expected uh, click-through rate. And with a probability of epsilon, we choose um, an ad here randomly, uh, uniformly. So it's called the epsilon greedy. And this is a, a pretty nice and simple uh, context-free type algorithm. Now, um, various um, work uh, have shown that, that there's, there are better ways to explore the space. And one is called the upper confidence bound um, algorithm. And the idea here is basically take, um, select the ads based upon um, the mean plus the standard deviation associated with that mean. And when you do this, you're going to actually um, learn more. You're going to converge better on an optimal policy and much more quickly. So um, so, so basically, um, there, there, there's no, in this case here, all we're doing is looking at consumer behavior. We don't know anything about the consumer. We just know that the consumer clicked on it and, um, and acted on the ad. And, and we, we just use that information to, um, to, to, to bias our ad selection. Now, um, OK, I, I'm not going to go through these. There's a variety of studies that have been done to show that these algorithms are actually more effective. The upper confidence bound algorithm is much more effective than the uh, epsilon greedy. Now, uh, going one step further, we can actually think about the consumer in a particular way and model the consumer in terms of variables that describe the consumer. And this is called a contextual uh, based um, bandit approach. And um, here, the idea is that um, rather than Here we take into account the context about the consumer. And we actually model the click-through rates for a particular consumer using, let's say in this case here, a linear regression model. We take into account the context, and we use that context to build a regression model. And um, in this case here, a least squared ridge regression model. And that will give us our mean for a particular ad in a particular context. So previously, all we were doing was counting up the number of clicks over the number of impressions. Here we're actually using a prediction model based upon linear regression. And in addition, we're actually coming up with this upper bound, this standard deviation measure as well, coming uh, that will fall out of the uh, regression model. And okay, so basically, um, this is our mean value, and this is our standard deviation, if you like. And this gives us the uh, ability to explore. And this, if we just focus on that, we would just be exploiting only. OK, so that's the regret, but forget it. No time for it. Um, so I want to show you uh, an interesting um, way of evaluating these types of algorithms. Um, and this is work that was done by a friend of mine, Lee Hong Lee, at Yahoo. And um, so the, the problem here is that, um, as you can see, we are just modifying our uh, policy for selecting ads as we go. So whether it's a context-free uh, algorithm where we're updating the click-through rate, or where we have a linear regression where we're updating the model as we get more data. Um, so the thing is, it's a dynamic uh, policy. And how do we evaluate a dynamic policy? There's just all these sequences of events, and it just becomes really, really difficult to, to it's not a traditional machine learning problem where we say, hey, we've got training data. Let's do our batch learning and modeling. Now let's compute an uh, ROC or AUC metric on this uh, held out or test data set. And so the problem is, um, um, so, so the key idea here is that um, we've got two challenges. First challenge is, OK, for any particular context, I may have hundreds or thousands of ads I could show. So that's the first problem. And in general, um, if I'm modeling this problem uh, with a model for each uh, offer or ad, 
I'm actually evaluating each offer and ad by itself. I'm saying, hey, give me the area under the curve for this ad here in isolation. And in isolation is bad. Uh, I'd like to take it in the context of all eligible offers or ads. So that's the first problem. Um, and this, this approach here will take care of that. In addition, I've got a dynamic environment. My, um, and my models are being changed real time. There's online learning going on here. And so the idea here is very simple um, and it's, it's really clever. Um, the idea is to collect data from your real system and you are basically randomly selecting ads for each uh, contextual situation in this case. And um, you're doing it uniformly. So you've got no biases in your, in your data collection. Now you've got pure data available for each context. In addition, so, so then you say, OK, well, um, I'm going to actually uh, treat each event in my, in my uh, test data set, or each context where I could show an ad, and I'm going to score each ad for that context. I'm going to select the highest, uh, um, ad or highest performing ad based upon eCPM. And uh, if that ad uh, was selected also by my system uh, in production, randomly in this case, um, then I'm going to use that in my, in my uh, metric calculation here. And I'm going to basically, um, this, is, this is basically saying, look, was the ad that was selected, was it, all, was it shown by the real system? And if it was, I'm going to compute this, uh, this expected click-through rate. And I can use this as a measure for assessing how good my algorithm is. So the details are here. I'll uh, share the slides with anybody who's interested, and you can go through them. But it's a very uh, powerful approach. Go ahead. So based on that, are you saying that if you have a family and there's <coughs> father and the mother in the family and the father is looking up home improvement and the mom's looking up codes for the kids. Yeah. If you put them one to one, the codes might win every time, but based on the behavior and the context and an unbiased test, mm -hmm. if the dad's on there, you might be able to figure that out and then push the home improvement ad to him in real time. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That would be the goal. That's awesome. So anyway, um, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm flipping through here because I want to get you to the $160,000, uh, because I know you're here for that. And uh, um, so, all right. Um, there's a company in China. It's called uh, EPNU. Uh, they're an ad network in China, demand side platform in China. And um, they have made available a data set and uh, prize money of $160,000 to, um, to, to, to do some work in the context of online advertising. And so um, I'm one of the judges for this competition. And uh, this competition actually started on April 1. And um, it's going to run on a quarterly basis for the next three quarters. And um, there, there are a number of us working uh, and teaching uh, with this problem set, uh, including Princeton and Peking University. And so here's a class I'm teaching. It just started this week. If you're interested in participating in this competition, you should definitely maybe sign up for my class um, at UC Santa Cruz. You can take it remotely if you like. Um, and um, we're going to use this competition as a backdrop to learn about the techniques of optimization, um, machine learning, all in the context of digital advertising. And um, so um, as motivation for the class, you will get to win $160,000. And if you get in the top 50 on the scoreboard, you get to have no exams at the end of the quarter. So that should be lots of motivation and incentive for you guys to show up. Um, there are milestone prizes as well. But anyway, it's a 1 million um, RMB uh, Chinese currency, and it's $160,000 US. So the idea here is that we want to maximize the number of clicks and conversions for a particular ad campaign subject to a fixed budget. And so it's a real problem, and it's a very exciting challenge. And the data is available on Dropbox, but you have to sign up for the competition first and be approved. And it's about 7.5 gig of data. Um, and the click-through rates are pretty low here, and conversion rates are even lower for three ad campaigns. And um, there's a couple of serial judges. And if you have questions, you send them to, to here. And um, so, all right. So, this is a great opportunity for academics and practitioners alike uh, to play with real data and experiment with ideas and, and, uh, and methodologies that you might be learning or using in, in other contexts. And um, 
I want to close by saying that um, you know the, the the world is deficient in terms of data science. We we need people who can you know hack up systems and um, who can think in terms of math and statistics and operations research. And in addition, may have experience in digital marketing. And 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 and, and so if you need a job in this space, um, you can talk to myself or you can talk to Jeff. I don't know if Jeff is here. Um, um, if you need a job locally, um, there's uh, lots of open positions in uh, NativeX or W3i. So all in all, um, I thank you for your attention, and I hope you learned something from this presentation. Thank you. So I guess there are, there's time for questions, maybe, or not. We're very close. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, sure, but send me an email. That'd be great. Yeah. How malleable are people? Is there an upper bound? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, um, I think that's still uh, a social science question. I think that um, for uh, from an engineering and practical perspective, um, a lot of the online advertising systems are really. Um, all about engineering and, and, and science, um, and not really about the social aspects of it yet. There, there are some social aspects that are being asked, uh, questions being asked, but uh, very few, in my opinion. Uh, and the flip side of that is, what's the relaxation? If people are moved in a certain direction and then they quit, how far back can they go? Is there relaxation? There, there, these are all great uh, questions. I think marketing science is a great way of uh, analyzing these behaviors, and um, so. There are a number of econometricians that are looking at these problems. So they're looking at causality in the marketing space. And so there's been a lot of work in this area over the past um, um, five years. Sorry? It's how much people really learn. Yes. Sure, 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 sure. So I guess our time is up. Sorry.